all right wonderful people welcome back to this wonderful channel where we bring you back to back update and information as the hot in case you have not joined our social media handle what are you waiting for kindly go ahead and subscribe like comment share and also remember to on your notification button so that whenever our news drop you will be the first one collect them all right, let's go down to the news proper as the hot you don't share uh, for the obodo uh, the insecurity in nigeria has gotten out of hand as um, bandit has seized uh, vehicles uh, belonging to soldiers <laughs> uh, the topic says nigerian army vehicles seized by bandit campaign belo tuji <laughs> um nah, for bandit to be to the seized soldier vehicle now we say uh, people when we say they're there for them, they know they know they say bro. Uh, because as see they be, uh, if bandit fit sees soldier vehicle, uh, now if we say one day, one day, <laughs> bandit uh, go even uh, become president or even sees president and take over the country. Meanwhile, let's go down to the full detail of the information as it they go. You know, Shala, bandit Kimpin Belo Tuji and his gang we are seen in a video. Uh, gyrating after taking over the Nigerian Army Armored Personnel Korea. Daily Post reported that, according to a counter surgency and security expert in the Lake Chad region, Zazazola Makama, Tuji, and his men also took over lots of ammunition from the military. Makama disclosed that a distress report was received by the troops indicating a high-level meeting of bandits at a specified location in Belotuji's camp. Troops responded swiftly to the area, but their vehicle became stuck in the marshy terrain, halting their advance. Makama revealed that the bandit then opened fire on the troops, which lasted for four hours. Due to the weather condition, heavy rain throughout the day, air support was unable to arrive promptly, allowing the bandits to enforce their position. The troops attempted to use the other MRAP to pull out the other one, but it got stuck in the mall too. Another team of troops were reinforced to the scene, but they are, before their arrival, the situation became overwhelming for those holding the ground as they could not pull out their two MP, MRAPs. The troops withdrew, leaving behind the vehicles. No fatality was recorded in the encounter. Hours later, Tuji and his boys appeared in the scene, shooting in the sky, screaming that they dislodged the troops and took their vehicles, he stated. As of the time of filing the report, the Nigerian army is yet to respond to the incident. <laughs> um, Ose Taylor, uh, this will tell you uh, what the country has become, where the country is going. Uh, they say Nigerian... They collected Nigerian army, uh, armored vehicle, but on the process, there was no casualty. <laughs> uh, and when I see that information, I say, who now they deceive? Who now they deceive? Oh? Who now they deceive? Uh, if so, that's done the sell armored car to the bandit. May they just tell us. Uh, because you can't tell me that um, your MRAP uh, was stuck in the mud. The second one was stuck in the mud. You people retreated. There was a lot of shooting. There was no casualty. <laughs> now, nah, uh, that information, uh, let people look at that information properly uh, before accepting it because uh, that thing looks somehow that uh, that uh, uh, bandits attacked army, took two armored vehicles without any casualty you don't shall have for the obodo for inside biafra land uh this monday morning uh yes say what to to don't stop for the place where we say that they call you must stay for inside inside uh where the uh unknown government clashed with also the energy army and the energy army them boys collected water water from the unknown government and when we do investigation uh some people say that they now the ESN, uh, or that said that the IPOB, or that said that part of um, the Afro Liberation Army, they do that one. And we are trying to find out. Uh, some people say 
the people will do that in non government no. <laughs> but the eyewitness is where we see uh, they say that the boys so <laughs> now the boys will be say then they for that obodo and then they carry out that operation they say they know one soldiers uh, may they come they occupy their land they say uh, this time, uh, waiting the soldiers they do now to just the day they, they collect money. And some people they talk say, hmm, say some katakata will be say they happen for the area. Now the soldiers they undress themselves, who uh, they come, uh, they carry out uh, that particular attack. Uh, we are trying to find out the truth. As it be, uh, they say a group reviews 98 security checking point exists in the southeast alleges extortion. <laughs> There are about 98 security checking points in the southeast. Uh, it's even more than uh, the person that counted this thing uh, did not count well. Because if you are moving to from Imo State to Potakot, you will see more than 30. If you are now moving from Imo State to Anambra, Iyo Iyo, they plenty. If you are now moving to Anambra to Enugu State, that is where there are many. If you are from there, going to a bunny state, my brother, the Yakpa. So tell me, upon all these security checking points, there is still uh, insecurity in the country. There is still attack. The thing is that uh, the people have not been able to tell us who is behind all the insecurity that we are facing in this country. Because uh, people say that uh, a river does not pass through the forest without bringing down trees. A group under the aegis of Igbo National Council worldwide has revealed that about 98 security checking points exist in the five states of the southeast region. It also lamented what it described as incessant harassment and extortion from citizens and motorists by the security personnel manning the checking points. In a press statement issued by its national coordinator, Chilos Gossent, he revealed that Abia State topped the list with 37 checking points, followed by Imo State with 23 checking points. It further revealed that Anambra and Enugu have 15 checking points each, as Ebony came behind with 8 checking points. The press statement said that the research was carried out by the Directorate of Human Rights Protection, a research department of the Council, with the mandate of checking human rights violations by various security outfits in the region. It further stated, the council was propelled to embark on the tax following a series of reports from members of the public on the humiliation they were encountering in the hands of security personnel on a daily basis. Gosson further stated in the press statement that some of the checking points are manned by, some, by a joint task force comprising the military, the police and civil defense, while at some blockade it will be either the military or the police. He stated that even though the group was not happy with the rate of insecurity in the region, the security operatives should carry out their operation with human face. The group pointed out that if the security personnel kept the rule of their professional engagement, it would build a healthy relationship between them and the civilians who also have responsibility of helping security outfits in fighting against criminalities. But the group, however, re regretted that the checking points and outposts have alleged turned to illegal toll gates and humiliation, humiliation points against civilians who are the road users. Uh, my brother, my people, uh, if you have actually traveled on some of this road, this Anambara Road, Imo State Road, Enugu State Road, Abia State Road, Ebony State Road, uh, River State Road, uh, you will concur that uh, what we are saying here is true. And um, there is one thing uh, uh, that, that, that usually happens uh, whenever there is one thing that usually happens uh, whenever these security people are warned to stay out of the road. Uh, you will find out that uh, immediately they move out of the road, you see what is called an increase in insecurity in that particular area. And sometimes uh, people have begun to, uh, began to ask questions. Questions like, who is behind the insecurity in the, uh, in the southeastern part of Nigeria? Uh, are the security behind it? Like um, Dan Juma said, uh, he said, a former retired soldier, that um, the insecurity in Nigeria, that there are some soldiers behind it. But the issue is, how do we uncover those bad eggs in the good eggs uh, that are causing uh, this evil in the community? They said kidnapping 350 million paid as ransom 
indictment on Soludo Securities Agency Obu. <laughs> uh, these kidnappers, it has become a good business for them if a kidnapper can cash out 350 million. Let's go out and see the full detail of that particular information. A human rights advocate, Charles Obu, has described the SBM intelligence report ranking Anambra State as the headquarters of kidnapping as a huge indictment on Governor Soludo's Charles Soludo, the Nigerian Police Force, and other security agencies. The statement comes after the SBM intelligence reporter report stated that 27 out of Nigeria's 36 states recorded ransom payment to kidnappers between July 2023 and July 2024, with Anambra State recording the highest ransom paid at $350 million. <laughs> Reacting to the development, Obu lamented that there is hardly a day that someone is not kidnapped in the state, including clerics, businessmen, and students. In a post on his Facebook page on Friday, Obu alleged that everyone who lives in the state knows about the issue but has chosen to be silent about it. He therefore urged Soludo not to wait for President Bolatinubu, stressing that the government needs to step up before the people lose one of the most important parts of Igbo land to criminals. Obu's words, as Anambra becomes Nigeria's kidnapping capital, yesterday the SBM intelligence report covering July 2023 to July 2024 ranked Anambra as the headquarters of ransom for kidnapping in the country. With around 350 million paid by Anambra victims to kidnappers, with many killed even after the ransom was paid. This is far ahead of second place Rivers, which recorded 67 million in ransom payment by victim of kidnapping. Uh, this is what is currently going on uh, in the Obodo now. Uh, kidnapping has become more like a legalized business and the people who are behind this incessant kidnapping in the Obodo is the people who we don't know. Meanwhile, this is where I'll be winding down the curtain and if this is your first time of joining us, kindly go ahead, subscribe, like and comment. Thank you for listening. God bless you.